Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this video. A few years ago, while I was still teaching in the classroom, one of my students asked me this question. Why is the speed of light in vacuum this particular number, 299792458 meters per second? And my instinctive answer to that was, well, because it has to be some value, right? We just happen to live in a universe where the speed of light happens to have that particular value in vacuum, and that's that. But fortunately, that question was stuck with me. And therefore I did a lot of research and boy, my mind was blown because what I eventually realized is that this number is not random at all. In fact, what I realized is that this number is directly connected to the Earth's size. I kid you not. If the Earth was slightly bigger than it is right now, then the value of the speed of light in vacuum would have been smaller. And if the Earth was smaller than has how big as it is right now, then the value of the speed of light would have been bigger. Which means the reason why speed of light in vacuum has this specific number is because Earth has this specific size. And I know it sounds preposterous as to why the value of a fundamental constant in the universe has anything to do with the size of the Earth. Well, you don't have to take my word for it. By the end of this video, we would have arrived at this conclusion. I would actually walk you through the series of questions that I thought about and make my thinking process clear. And then you conclude and you tell me whether the conclusion makes sense or not. All right. So if you're excited about this, let's begin. Okay. So where do we start? Well, we start by looking at the fact that the speed of light value in vacuum, this number, is an exact value. Here's what I mean. If you were to look at the measured value of some constants, like say the gravitational constant, then you would notice that, you probably know about this number, right? Then you would notice that the value is not exact. There is always some uncertainty, it's uncertainty over there. It's usually not mentioned, but there's there, which means the last few numbers, we are not very certain about it. And we don't know about the numbers that come after this. And that's the case for anything that you measure. Whatever you're measuring, there'll always be some uncertainty, at least because your measuring devices have a limit. For example, if you're measuring something in centimeter, using a centimeter scale, you will have uncertainty at a millimeter range. If you're using a millimeter scale, you'll have uncertainty in a micrometer range and so on and so forth. So always all, all measurements will have some or the other kind of uncertainties. But the speed of light, this has no uncertainty. Why? Because this is not a measured value. This value was fixed by humanity. Here's what I mean. If you shoot a beam of light and just wait for exactly one second, the distance that the light travels in one second is fixed as this number. We say that whatever this distance is, we have called it to be 299792458 meters. It's not a measurement. We have accepted that this is the number we're gonna call that distance. Why do we do that? Because this is how we define a meter. You see, in our daily life, we don't think about it, but if you were to ask me, Mahesh, how big is actually a meter? I might say it's about yay big, but how big is this? What's the precise definition of how big a meter is? This way, a precise way of thinking about what a meter is, is that we would say that, hey, if you wait for one second, whatever distance light travels, by definition, it is 299792458 meters, which means you take that distance, divide it into so many parts, and then each part is exactly, exactly one meter. That's the current definition of the meter. That is the system international definition of the meter today. So since the meter is defined using the speed of light, the speed of light is exact. But why, why are we using speed of light to define our meter? Well, because speed of light in vacuum is a fundamental constant. Speed of light in vacuum does not depend upon any reference frames, which is awesome, which means anybody who does this experiment will always get the same value and therefore Tomorrow, if we lost our meter sticks, anyone can recreate our meter stick by using this definition of the meter. But now, we can come back to the original question that my student asked. Her question was, why did we fix this number to be this much? I mean, we could have fixed this number to be anything that we want, but why this ugly looking number? I mean, at the least, we could have rounded it off to a very nice number like 300 million, which we often, you know, approximated to. Then, why did we do this? Ah, the thing is, this definition of the meter happened very recently, about 40 years ago, somewhere in 1980s, we defined the meter this way. Before this, we had a different definition of the meter. And to understand why we fix this, we have to go back in time and look at what that definition was. If we go back about 140 years ago, the definition of the meter that we had just built 
was this. We made a meter bar, like a sacred meter bar. We kept it in France and we said, you know what? The length of that meter bar, we called it one meter. Well, exactly not the entire length, the length from the marking so over here so that, you know, even if the ends get damaged, it's fine. But anyways, about 140 years ago, this is how we had defined what a meter was. That the length of that particular bar, which is kept in France, that's a meter. And since we wanted to make sure that other countries could also have access to this, we made copies of this, we made replicas of this, and we distributed it to many countries, including the United States, by the way. They agreed to use the metric systems over 140 years ago. Just saying, just saying. But anyways, that's how we use the, that's how we define the meter for a long time. But you can see the problem with this, right? First of all, if you're making replicas of this, you can always have errors regardless of how careful you are. The copies will not be ever perfect, which means different countries have slightly different <laughs> definition of meters. But also the length of an object depends on the temperature. So even if you keep it in a vault with perfect temperature control, whatever it is, there will be minor fluctuations in the temperatures. And because of these fluctuations in temperatures, the length of the meters would keep changing. Now, again, this is an exaggeration, but you get the point, right? Having a physical object is really bad. But guess what? We were able to pull it off for about 100 years, right? Because we did a really good job at it. Again, this is exaggerated. First of all, we made sure that the temperature variation did not happen because we made it out of a particular alloy with platinum iridium alloy, which had really good resistance to, you know, thermal changes, the resistance for the length changes due to temperature. And you can look at the shape of this. It was engineered in a way that, you know, the shape is in such a way that it can really resist twisting and bending and all of that. But at the end of the day, it is still a physical object. So if it gets destroyed, it can get destroyed, then we would have, uh, we will no longer have a meter. And that's the reason why we had to change it. But anyways, you know, when we had used this as a definition of the meter, okay, according to this definition of the meter, the speed of light, the most precise measurement of the speed of light happened to be 299.792.456.2 with some uncertainty meters per second. And then once we had the technology to measure the speed of light so precisely, we said, hey, you know what? It's time to get rid of this prototype. It's time to get rid of this thing. And instead of defining meter this way and measuring the speed of light this way, let's fix a speed of light to some particular number very close to this and then redefine meter. And that's why we fixed the speed of light to a number close to this, so close to this, and that's why we have 458. I know, you may be wondering, why is it 458 and not 457? I don't know about that. If anybody knows about that, please let me know. So putting it together, why did we fix the speed of light to this particular ugly number? <laughs> because we wanted to make sure that it's as close as possible to the measured value based on the previous definition of the meter. This way, the new definition of the meter becomes as close as possible to the previous definition of the meter. But now comes the most important question of this video, the highlight of this video, who decided how big this meter should be? How do we decide how big this platinum iridium alloy should be? To answer that question, we need a revolution. What am I talking about? Well, a revolution that will actually allow you to dig deeper into any subject by asking questions like this using Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant also uncovers stories by asking a lot of questions and making you interact with it in various subjects like maths, data, programming, or even AI for that matter. This is why I keep recommending Brilliant to everyone because it's an incredibly powerful approach to rediscovering ideas intuitively. And by the way, its lessons are pretty bite-sized. So even with 15 to 20 minutes a day, you'll still progress through various topics and gain new intuition. For example, check out their visualizing data course. Right off the bat, you start analyzing which city you should be living in, start doing a case study on Starbucks customer demographics and so much more. And by the way, that's just the first lesson. <laughs> and if you think this is great, what's more awesome is you can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Just go to brilliant.org slash floatheadphysics. The link is also in the description. And if you do decide to make a purchase, even there you'll get a 20% off on your annual subscription. So do check it out. And now back to the video. So how did we decide how big this meter should be? What was it based on? Well, it was based on the size of our planet. 
If you go back even more 100 years, about 230 years ago, the French Revolution happened. They were tired of so many things, but one of the things that they were tired of was people using their own units. Some people were using foot to measure the length. Some people were using somebody's waist size, which you call the yard, by the way, to measure the, uh, the, measure the length of things. So everybody had their own units and people were so tired of it. They were like, okay, I, we want a single unit. In fact, they were so ambitious. They said that we want a unit that can be globally used by everyone. And therefore, they came up with a new unit for length, the meter. The meter was invented. And the word, by the way, meter comes from the Greek, which means to measure. So in some sense, they chose the most pure word that they could think of for this particular unit. But if we wanted this to be a global unit, like everybody would accept, then it had to be based on some standards that everyone would accept. What could it be? What reference could we use to define the meter? Well, let's use the globe, they said. Let's use the size of the earth itself to define what the meter is because everybody lives on earth, right? So we said, let's call the distance from the equator to the North Pole through Paris. It has to be via Paris. But let's call that distance to be exactly 10 million meters or exactly 10,000 kilometers. This was the very first definition of the meter. But before we go forward, you may be curious about why we decide to call this distance to be 10 million meters. Why not 1 million or why not in something else? At this particular point, we're going so back in time that I don't even know if we really have records that rationalize and give us reasons for why we did this. But I did find something very funny, okay? So apparently we were so, the Frenchmen were so, so tired of the old system. They thought that they're gonna go change everything to metric system. In fact, they thought that, you know what? Even a day should not have 24 hours. It should have 10 hours. And one hour should not have 60 minutes. It should have 100 minutes. Completely metric. Even if you take the right angle, which is 90 degrees, they thought, no, no, no. Let's call it 100 degrees. And each degree is a 60 minutes. Well, they said, no, no, no. Let's say each degree has 100 minutes. And this is where it gets interesting. If each degree has 100 minutes, then the total number of minutes in the right angle would be 100 times 100, 10,000 minutes, right? And so since a right angle has 10,000 minutes, that's where they probably decided, let's say that each minute will subtend an arc of one kilometer. So this whole right angle will subtend an arc of 10,000 kilometers. And that's probably the reason why they decided to call it 10,000 kilometers. Now again, I don't know how true that is, but at the end of the day, what's important is that it's a round number, right? And that makes sense. That's great for us that the first definition was a round number, which makes sense. By the way, although we started adopting the metric system when it comes to length and so many other units, we did not adopt it for angles. We did not adopt it for time. So that's the reason why we still have 24 hours and we still have 90 degrees. But anyways, what they did after this was there were a couple of Frenchmen actually went on an expedition to actually measure exactly how much this distance is, you know, in the older units. And they did the conversion, whatever distance they found out to be in their old units, they equated it to 10 million meters. And from that, they decided, they figured out how much one meter should be. And from that, they created finally the prototype. Earlier meter prototype was made of different metals. Then we realized that it was not it was not good. And so we finally changed it to the platinum iridium alloy. So where did this definition of one meter come from? From the size of the earth. And it's from there, the speed of light was calculated. And finally from there, we redefined the meter by fixing the speed of light to be this value. And so now think about this. What if the earth was slightly bigger. If the other was slightly bigger, would probably think nothing would have changed. They would have probably still decided to call this distance to be 10 million meters. I mean, of course, you would argue that if the earth was slightly bigger, maybe, you know, the humanity wouldn't have evolved at all. Maybe the animals would have evolved, species would have evolved completely differently, but let's, let's not worry about that. You cut me some slack over here, okay? But if the other was slightly bigger, then we would have still called this 10 million meters. Then the size of our meter would have been slightly bigger right? Because the earth is bigger, this distance is bigger. If the size of the meter would have been slightly bigger, then the speed of light that we would have eventually calculated would have been slightly smaller in meters per second, right? Because the length of the meter is more than the speed of light. I mean, the, the, the physical distance that light travels in one second would be the same, but if the meter size is big, then that distance traveled in terms of that meter, that would have been smaller. 
And if this number would have been smaller, then obviously the number that we would have fixed would also have been smaller. So right in front of your eyes, you can see if the earth was bigger, we would have gotten a smaller number. And similarly, if the earth was slightly smaller, then the meter stick, the meter definition would have been smaller, and then we would have gotten a slightly bigger number. And that's what I told you at the beginning of the video. The reason why the number happens to be exactly this number is because Earth happens to have this specific size. Booyah! So what do you think about this perspective? For me, this is a big reminder that, um, you know, the values of the fundamental constants of our universe is deeply connected with our measuring systems, which is in turn deeply connected to the world that we live in. Not only is it not only its political history, but even the physical size of it. That I find is truly profound. Okay, see you.